Hello and welcome to the program. This is Moneyline with me, Nancy Naji. It's so nice to be here again after the holiday and after the weekend. So thank you all for joining us again today and definitely this week. On today's edition of the program, we will be looking at the market. So many things to talk about. Of course, the market just traded. Uh, I'm talking about the Nigerian exchange uh, traded, or oh, there are many markets now, not just stock market. The market traded just for uh, a few days last week because of the public holiday that was declared by uh, the government. We'll be looking at that. Uh, the MPC meeting for May will be held next week. Yes, if I'm not mistaken, next week. Inflation data is also being inspected by the NBS. How are the markets reacting? And taking a look at the central bank website, if you click right now, www.cenbank.org, that's sendbank.org. What you will notice if you're someone that goes on that website regularly is that you would not see the official rate of 379. The Apex Bank has removed that, and we really do not know why. There's been a lot of speculations. I don't want to follow in the speculation. I'm waiting for the Apex Bank to explain why they've done that. Is it that, okay, let me just hold my fire so that I don't speculate. <laughs> but we'll be looking at all of that today on today's edition of the program. The CEO of Wyoming Capital, Tajuddin Olayinka, will be joining me shortly to take a look at that. But before we go into the program proper, let's quickly take you through the business headlines. Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation says the imports of premium motor spirit by the uh, organization rose in January by 100 million liters following the dormancy of Nigeria's refineries to refine crude. According to the latest figures in the financial and operations report of the corporation, it reveals that NNPC imported 1.68 billion liters of petrol through the direct sales of crude oil and direct purchase, while 1.58 billion liters PMS was imported in the preceding month. Still with the NNPC, it says that it has selected 26 foreign and local companies as well as 12 countries to lift the country's crude oil for the next two years. The crude term contract is expected to run from 2021 through 2023 would see the firms and the selected nations which would operate on a government to go go government to government basis to purchase the commodity from the national oil company. The Senate Committee on Finance has sent out invitations to heads of 60 government-owned firms to start appearing before it from this week. Some of the 60 government-owned firms already summoned, according to the list obtained from the panel secretariat, include the NNPC, the Nigeria Customs Service, the Nigeria Maritime and Safety Administration Agency. They are to explain their failure to remit various funds running into about 2 trillion naira to the Consolidated Revenue Fund account of the federal government. The National Pension Commission has said the higher percentage of younger workers that have joined the contributory pension scheme will help to sustain the system. The commission disclosed this in its report that 77% of the contributors were below 40 years of age. It explained that the public sector accounted for 33% of the contributors registered, while the micro pensions uh, plan had 5.3% of the retirement savings accounts registered during the period under review. Fertilizer imports increased by $37.71 million in 2019 to $247.91 million last year, representing an increase of 84.4%. Data from the International Trade Statistics on Imports showed a breakdown of imports. According to the country of origination, to include Morocco, $128 million, Russia, $83.37 million, China, $17.15 million, and Germany, which exported $11 million. 
A Kitty State Agriculture Commissioner, Labo De Adetoin, has disclosed the state's government plan to produce over 1 million metric tons of rice yearly. Olabo De will lament the country's unquantifiable loss from importation of rice. So the Kitty Rice Pyramids Project is part of attempts to discourage importation of rice and boost local production of highly nutritious rice. Finally, the African Development Bank has pledged to support public development banks uh, in achieving climate and sustainable development goals. The president of the African Development Bank, Dr. Akimumi Adishina, at the Finance in Common Summit spoke on the need to build a system able to work efficiently together to finance regional infrastructure at scale. Uh, including energy ports and railways, ICT infrastructure to accelerate Africa's regional integration and competitiveness. All right, those are the top stories at this time. Let's quickly take a break, and when we return, it will be time for us to take you through the numbers for today. We'll be right back. If you employ more than three people, you're supposed to have a cover for them. Your driver, your security man, your housemate, that's three. You're supposed to provide this group life for them. Because if anything happens, it's not going to be a case of, hey, she was very good, or the security man was a good person, so um, uh, let's see what we can mobilize. No, it's, a, it's an entitlement. You're supposed to, and he, is, he or she is supposed to know that my employer has made this provision for me. So if anything happens, my relations, this is what they get. Mm. So those are some of the things mm. that uh, have been uh, provided. Of course, we have the uh, professional indemnity for medical uh, and health workers. Uh, uh, those ones are, all, are also there. That's right. All right, let's quickly take you through the numbers. For the Nigerian market, I did tell you earlier that the market just traded for three days, that's uh, Monday, Tuesday, and Friday, because there was a public holiday on Wednesday and Thursday. So uh, the three days was due to the Eid, like I said earlier. But if we take a look at what was traded last week, can I go to the wall right now? I think I can. OK, if we take a look at what happened uh, last week, we saw 840.3 million ordinary shares. What about 9.56 billion Naira? They were transacted in about 13,239 uh, deals. The financial services sector led the volume activity chart, followed by the ICT sector, as well as the conglomerate sector. Mm -hmm. If we take a look at trading in the shares of Zenith, uh, bank and uh, access as well as e-transact, those three counters accounted for most of the volume that were traded last week. Though we had brief trade, I wouldn't say light trade really, but brief trade because of the three uh, days. So that made the broad index go upside. For the three days that we traded last week, we saw positive numbers on Friday. The broad index, which is the all share index, was up by about 0.72. Uh, percent. Why, uh, while the year-to-date performance stands still in the negative territory at 1.93%. Uh, if we take a look at the market diary now, uh, let me take you through some other markets that we track for you, the fixed income markets uh, as well as other markets. We'll start uh, with the FGN bonds market, it was bearish last week. The FGN euro bond market was also bearish on U.S. rising inflation as well as, uh, yes, U.S. rising inflation, really, and uh, Treasury uh, yields. Uh, for T-bills, we saw average yields rising uh, last week as OMO bills rose week on week. And talking about OMO bills... Uh, we're expecting 60 billion naira worth of automobiles to match up on Tuesday. Well, the CBN offered 117.6 billion naira worth of bills split across three maturities uh, last week. The DMO bond auction is expected to hold this Wednesday. Uh, the DMO is to raise 150 billion naira across three tenors March 2027, March 2035, and April 2020. 49. If we take a look at how our currency 
has fared, at least in the last few days. I did tell you earlier that if you go on the Central Bank website right now, you would not see the 379 that we used to see before. So there are speculations about that, that what has happened? Uh, what will the impact be? Perhaps now that, should we take it that the rate is now 400, 411 Naira from the I and E window? Uh, we saw the Naira trading at a very tight band last week. At the I and E window, it traded for 411.67 Naira to one US dollar. The parallel market is doing about 484 to one US dollar. With the removal of that official rate on the website, of the Central Bank of Nigeria. Does it mean that states will have more Naira now for dollars? But like I said earlier, I don't want to speculate. Let's see if the Apex Bank will come up with an explanation. But if we're taking a look at the um, external reserves, according to the Central Bank of Nigeria, uh, external reserves stood at $34.58 billion on May 11th. Um, okay, what else? What, what, what else is there for us? These are markets. Okay, I think I can move over now to other parts of Africa. Uh, talking about South Africa, the government of South Africa has gone back on its promise of offering civil servants a 0% cost of living adjustment after offering state employees a 1.5% salary adjustment and a nearly 1,000 rand uh, cash gratuity. But that is seemingly not even impacting the South African market this morning because what we saw just before we came into the studio, 1.14% for the GSC all share. Now for Ghana, interesting numbers coming out from Ghana, talking about inflation numbers. Inflation for April in Ghana uh, stood at 8.5%. In fact, it dropped to 8.5% and that is the pre COVID rate. Inflation here in Nigeria is at 18.17%. As at uh, March, we're expecting the new numbers from the NBS. And talking about Ghana, uh, the president of Ghana, uh, Nana Kufo Addo, has left for Paris on a three country working visit. He will visit France, Belgium, as well as South Africa. So, mm, the market's 1.5% uh, down. Uh, we're expecting also the NPC meeting from the Bank of Ghana uh, to, uh, we don't really, es do we really expect anything uh, new? Uh, because the Bank of Ghana, which is the central bank, has really talked about inflation dropping and it's really done that 8.5% pre-COVID levels. Let's move over to Kenya. You can see an 11 basis point upside for uh, the Kenyan market there. Uh, one big company in Kenya called Safaricom has um, beat estimates. It has released its result and the company tells us that uh, it's posting 68 billion Kenyan shillings. Yeah, not dollars, Kenyan shillings. The currency of Kenya is called shillings, but you need to differentiate it because Uganda also uses shillings. So Kenyan shillings, Ugandan shillings, what other country? Tanzanian shillings, those three East African countries use shillings, but we differentiate it with their, you know, their name, the name of the country for the currency. I hope you understand what I'm saying. <laughs> All right, for Egypt, up 0.77%. Let's move over to uh, the United States, where Dow features pointed to an opening loss today. Wall Street came off its wildest weeks of 2021. Last week, we saw the CPI in the United States uh, jumping to about 4.2% from a year earlier. That's the fastest rate since 2008, though uh, the Fed Chair Jerome Powell is saying that there's no cause for alarm, really. And uh, Janet Yellen, who is the Treasury uh, Secretary, has also said there's no cause for alarm, that the U.S. economy needs all it can right now to get back to its feet amid this pandemic. So these are the numbers. Let's quickly move over to uh, the Eurozone where the UK is easing lockdown with restaurants and pubs to open to customers for in dining. So we're seeing restaurants and pubs opening in London and let's see how that would uh, definitely impact the market. You're seeing the European markets all in the green uh, today. For Asia, uh, Asian investors reacted to the release of 
Chinese economic data. Uh, they also reacted to Taiwan's uh, index drop of about 3% overnight. The Taiwanese market dropped about 2.99% overnight, as well as the spike in domestic infections in uh, Taiwan. Mainland Chinese stocks were higher overnight. So uh, these are what Asian investors are watching. What else is left for me to say? Okay, commodities. Can we have commodities right now? All prices are in a tight range. Oil is expected to be little changed on lingering in, uh, COVID infections in India because that is also impacting oil price. Gold is hitting a three-month high at 1,853 US dollars an ounce. Cocoa prices up half of 1%, but cocoa prices are also expected to drop this week. Why? On lower demand from Europe and surplus production from Cote d'Ivoire as well as Ghana. Uh, for other commodities we track for you, palm oil is really dropping. What's happening? 6%, 4,233 US dollars. Sugar prices are also expected to climb this week on India. Corn prices, that's maize, is expected to rebound this week. All right, so I think those are the markets for you. Those are the facts behind these numbers that you see, so all this Turinchi and English that I've been speaking is to explain to you how the market is working, what makes it work, and what are investors watching. Let's quickly take a break, and when we come back, my guests will be joining me. We'll be putting some more perspectives into some of those headlines you see, especially as it relates to the market, and some of the things that I've, I've been trying to churn out to explain. My guest will be doing it better when he joins me after the break. Don't forget to join us on all our social media our platforms. You can tweet. Is it tweet at me or tweet me? Which one? I think now just like <laughs> tweet has become a verb. <laughs> just like Google. Google. Google it. <laughs> you know, English. But whatever it is, you can find me on Twitter at Nancy. You can also find the show on Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, YouTube. And I must say, for those of you watching right now, you want to see more of this, in case you don't even want to see more of this, for you to learn, like they said, knowledge is power. Go on YouTube. Go on our YouTube channel. You can find a lot of great resource. For those of you doing PhD, go there. I don't want to be s getting your emails. Just go on our YouTube channel and find some of the topics there. And, you, you know, get to watch again, even if you've seen it before. So much uh, to chew when it comes to our YouTube channel. Money line with Nancy TV. I'll see you all again after the break where I'll be speaking with my guests to stay. The program. My guest is joining me right now, Tajuddin Olayinka, who is the Chief Executive Officer at Wyoming Capital. Welcome to you, Mr. Olayinka, and thanks for joining us on the show today. Yeah, thank you, Nancy. Good morning. Good morning. Let's get started. How are you all coming back from the Salah break? I know the market traded on Friday, but I don't want to say light trade because the volumes I saw were quite impressive for three days. 
So what's happening? Like they say, what's up for the market this week? What's up? Well, um, if you look back to last, last five trading sessions, you will see clearly that uh, market maintains some kind of balance, you know, you know, from, you know for some kind of bullish trend. Uh, not so strong though, but uh, something that gives hope. So for me, I, I, I would say that uh, we, we're going to see that, that you know, that same upbeat, more so coming from what happened on Friday. So market for this week will, should be just, you know, should, should, be, should be on the balance, sort of. Where's that hope coming from? You talk about hope. Where's the hope? What are you deriving hope from? Well, if, if you look at uh, the, the first quarter results, from you know some of the listed, especially, especially you know many of the listed companies, you will see that uh, uh, you know there, there is some kind of confirmation that uh, in respect of what happened to inflation, in respect of in respect of what CBN does to uh, uh, you know rising yield in the, in the fixed income market, the market itself is also resilient. Equity market will respond you know appropriately, and what we are seeing is more of adjustment coming from you know coming from those companies. The companies are adjusting, you know, appropriately to rising costs in the economy and, of, of course, to, drag, you know, to the rising yield in the fixed income market. So the hope is actually coming from the fact that uh, investors have seen that uh, even though yields are high, yields are up in the other, in the other market, but this equity market has come to stay. You know, the, the, the firms have, you know, have the power to adjust to, uh, you know, short-term movement in the market, even though there will there'll be, there'll be temporary uh, upset, you know, uh, you know, to the market itself. The, the fact that, uh, you know, the, 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 the companies have demonstrated the power to adjust appropriately to whatever, whatever cost pressure is imposed on the economy. So that, that, that hope is significantly from that, you know, you know from that aspect of the market. Mm. Okay, speak to me about how you all feel ab uh, about the Q1 financial statements coming in from some of the quoted companies. Uh, which companies is the market most impressed with, at least the ones that we have seen? Uh, first quarter results for most, for most of them, if you look at the banking, the, the, the banking stocks, generally, the bank generally, they haven't done badly. And if you also look at, uh, you, know, you know, manufacturing companies, yes, they are having some challenges, but, they are, you know, they are also responding. Uh, uh, mostly, the, 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 the best results have come from the banks and, you know, some, some non-bank uh, listed companies. If you look at, uh, if you look at uh, Zenit GT and uh, look at several, several, of, you know, several of the banks, you, you, you see that, uh, you know, there is hope from these banks, especially, you know, when, when we judge from the fact that, uh, you know, the economy is being disrupted somehow, you know, with, with all this crisis here and there. Yet, they are able to respond and adjust, adjust to reality of reality of that appropriately. So, we, we, have seen, we have seen good results from, from the banks, and uh, we have also seen good performance from non-bank not bank retail companies. Mm. What are the banks doing differently? Really, because some of this the impressive result is coming from where? Where is it coming from? Ah, uh, well, <laughs> you know, they, 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 they grant credits, one. And of course, you know, bank, banking business is a portfolio of uh, all sorts of businesses you can think of. So they are involved in all sectors of the economy, the good and the bad. But they will, they will more likely want to hold on to the good, to the good side of the economy. So the, the bank is taking advantage of the fact that they have portfolio that, they have a portfolio that is diversified. So I think that's 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 just the basis. They are lending, they are trading forex, they are they are involved in uh, for, you, you, you know financial imports and things like that. So they have they have their hands on all sectors of the economy, and they of course they will take the they, they will take a bigger pie of the good side of the economy. So that's what is happening. Mm. Shouldn't that reflect on Nigerians one? And how is that also reflecting on the market? Are uh, investors? Uh, buying more banking counters as a result of that? Are they buying more banking stocks? Of course. That's what is happening. They are buying more banking stocks. Of course, you, you also see that uh, uh, the, the high cap stocks like the like Dangote Cement, like uh, Boa, no, they, they also take interest in some other stocks too. But they buy more banking stocks because of that opportunity that they have. Mm. It's, it's, it's a huge opportunity for them. So uh, they, they seem to be interested more, more in banking stocks. Okay, is it also because of that the banks 
dish out dividends, perhaps also a bit regularly uh, than others at least, the banks have a track record of giving slices of their profits to their uh, shareholders? Uh, to some extent, because uh, they have also been consistent in their, in, in, in their earnings uh, uh, profile. You know, if you look at the earnings across board, across the banking industry, you see that they have maintained, you know, uh, they have maintained significant growth in, that, in, the, in their earnings. Look at what happened in 2020. In spite of the lockdown, in spite of all those uh, issues that the economy had, they were able to manage themselves and still turn out something, something good. Look at GTV, look at Zenit, look at the, look at the earnings per share, seven era, I mean, for each of them. You, you know, that was a good result. So, and uh, the market sees that uh, no matter what happens, in 2021, they are likely to do much better than what we saw in 2020. And so they are keen to that, uh, uh, that, huge, that huge opportunity. And so, so obviously, banks should be able to pay more, because they hear more. Mm. If we take a look at the Nigerian stock market, the way it is constituted right now, and let me speak from the pandemic perspective. If you take a look at the cyclical, cyclical stocks, the stocks that are affected by the way an economy is also affected. So if an economy is going, okay, let me say, for example, the Angota Cement is a cyclical stock. The banking stocks are non-cyclical uh, uh, an, to an extent. If you take a look at those categories, of, of stocks. Do you think that the pandemic really battered those categories of stocks the way we expected, even though that the Nigerian market, stock market, uh, was one of the best performing last year? Yes. Um, for, 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 for banking stocks or the bank industry as a whole, what, what, what informed that performance was basically, uh, you, know, the, the, uh, you know, the forbearance given to them by central bank. Uh, it's not that uh, the, the pandemic did not affect them, but they, they still were, they were able to operate. And of course, the, the central bank saw the need, for, the need to also give them forbearance. And so that also helped in, their, in, in, in shaping their figures, or I mean, putting their balance sheet in the right perspective. So um, for, for, for banks, yes, maybe. But for, for, for no banks like the Zang Langote Cement, they benefited, especially all the cement, all the cement companies, they benefited from uh, the spending, uh, uh, the spending activities by government, you know, uh, having to also, uh, you, you, you know, having to intervene in the economy during that lockdown. Finally, when, when, when the economy opened again and they, they saw the need to also intervene. So the intervention from government, the fiscal side, actually helped those, those cement companies asking uh, 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 contractors to use uh, cement in, you know, in, 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 in telling roads and things like that. So that, that creates jobs in that industry and that that put so much activities in that industry. And that was why we saw performance from both Boa, uh, Wapo, and uh, uh, also the Dangote Cement. They benefited from good spending from, you, you know, from government as, you know, as a way of intervention in the economy. Okay, let's talk about First Bank. Is there a kind of stability right now around First Bank stock? After what happened about two weeks ago, I'm trying to see if I can get the stock price this morning. But is there a kind of stability returned especially now with the constitu constituted board and what have you. Are investors still yes. having faith in uh, Nigeria's third largest lender? Yes. There's a new faith in that, uh, in that, in that bank because uh, uh, the, the, the investors saw that uh, uh, the, 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 the people behind poor performance of the bank have been removed. And so for that reason, they should have more confidence in the people that are there or people that are left behind to, you know, to paddle the canoe. So obviously, uh, investors' confidence is stronger now than what it was before the removal of those, uh, those people, those personalities. Mm. Okay, let's talk about uh, let's talk about other markets, if you can. You talked about fixed income market. At least you were talking about yields earlier. Yes. How do you see it this week? How do you see the outlook for other markets this week? Well, um, you know, if you don't, if you are not in fixed income, you are in equity, and if you are not in equity, you are in property. But most, most importantly, investors, you know, put their eyes on either equity or, or fixed income because of uh, liquidity of the, liquidity in that market. Uh, I, I, I expect, even though the market was a bit bearish last week, I expect some, some, you know, some inflow coming in, coming to that market. You know, what is disturbing the two markets? Is the absence of foreign, foreign portfolio investors? Mm. You know, the two market, both the fixed income and, and uh, equity market are, are, are equally affected. 
you know. But the moment, the moment, the moment, uh, government is able to manage this exchanges, exchanges problem, or sort of you know, unify it. I expect to see more activities, you know, in, in, in both sectors, both in the equity and fixed income. So fixed income too should also, should also, you know, uh, show some performance. Even though most most investors in that in that space prefer to take advantage of what happens, you know, during auctions. And so once auctions are coming, they will wait for that auctions and they see whether they, they will get more, for, you know, for motion down coming to the secondary market. So clearly, uh, I expect. You know, activities will pick up after some of the some of the auctions that are coming on. Why do you think that investors are pulling out of the of the market? Why? Which of the market now? The, the, the two markets? Yes. Uh, the, the, is it the, the, the one thing that the, the market, the, the economy itself is awash with liquidity. Excess, there, is, there is so much money supply. There is so, money supply is 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 is, is rising every day. So the, the, either way you look at it, that money must be invested somewhere. Our money can only be invested in the liquid market, where you can go in and come out easily. And so, uh, in, respect for, in respect of what happens to the economy, in respect for the, the state, the, the, the level of crisis in the economy, especially this unrest here and there, we we'll still see the need to invest money in, in area where you think you can get it back, especially you know, in fixed income market. So that is why you, you see more activities again in fixed income market. And those who cannot, those, those who are not too comfortable with, with the yield there, was, was, you know, we also come to the equity market and, and, and enjoy the performance there. So basically, investors must invest. They cannot continue to hold cash, except there is war. Once there is no war, nobody wants to hold cash. This when, there is, when, when, when they have declared war, then they will, will, not, will not begin to hold cash. So basically, uh, I expect to see performance in both uh, improve performance, you know, in both markets. Mm. So, uh, is is insecurity a source of concern for the markets right now? As well, pockets of kidnappings, uh, insecurity concerns across the country is that impacting? How is that impacting the equities market? And how do you think is also impacting other market, the money markets, uh, and other markets that we track? The, the impact of that on equity markets is, uh, uh, you know, you, you, we, we can limit it to, you know, to uh, uh, business activities of the listed companies, you know, yeah. especially how they are able to, uh, you know, get their raw materials, you know, especially in, in those, those who depend on local raw materials, how they're able to source these raw materials locally. And uh, if, if the supply is disrupted, of course, they, they have to look for import either from West Coast or from other, from other countries around the world. So that, that, that can impact on the activities. But, but market is looking beyond that. Market believes that uh, this crisis must, must be resolved one way or the other. And uh, the, you know, no matter how you look at it, they still have to invest. So uh, basically, yes, it, it, affects, it affects the activities of the listed companies, you know, the ability, to, the ability to, 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 to source raw materials and, of course, improve on their performance. Of course, it's, it's, it's also see that uh, that is also affecting the demand side of the economy too, because most 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 farmers or people who are supposed to be in the farm to earn income are not able to do so and so they can't they can't participate in it that they can't uh, you know also contribute to, to to demand side of the economy even though they also uh, they're they, they also expected to to uh, uh, to be part of the supply side so either way they, they you know that will that will impact the the listed companies but the investors see that uh, yes this this crisis is, is somehow restricted to to certain area the areas where, where there are more demands are in the southern part of the country and also that, that has not been severely affected. So for, for them, yes, let's see, let, let's see how it goes. That's, you know, that's what is happening. Let's see how it goes. Don't, Will it be better than what we are seeing now or not? Just, let's see how it goes. Don't you think that the insecurity concerns across the nation, just like you said, would impact some of the companies listed on the exchange that need raw materials, especially perhaps companies in the, the FMCG companies, uh, some of the conglomerates and, and all of that quoted are on the exchange. How do you see that even playing out in terms of purchasing power for their eventual end users or the customers? And how inflation would also bite, squeeze the profit of those companies, as well as how inflation, you talked about money supply earlier, which I'll come back to later, how inflation would also be affecting the end users or the consumers for those of us that go to the marketplace? Yeah, uh, that's that's a good question, Nancy. Um, inflation is is a is a serious factor. It's it's a it's, it's a big problem to the economy, uh, not only to the listed companies, to every economic agent as a whole. So if 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 you see that uh, uh, 
uh, uh, the the uh, you know uh, the, the, the purchasing power the purchasing power of people uh, is now being weakened by you know the fact that uh, inflation is rising because of the threat to food supply or uh, or supply of uh, raw materials or supply of other items to the economy from from from, from one specific side. Uh, yes, it, it's, it's affecting them. But one thing you must see is that uh, the, the the listed companies or firms generally have you know that 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 tendency to adjust to availability of cost in the short run, no matter how it's like they must they must they are expected. In fact, they must reasonably adjust to availability of cost, no matter the level of cost pressure on the, on the economy. They must adjust, and that's why you, you see a further drag on inflation. No matter what happens, if 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 if, if they cannot recover costs, they, 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 they have to stay out. They can't remain there. But in the short run, once, once they are able to cover the available costs, and uh, you know they, they can still make, make make you know make a little you know, out of variable costs, they will remain there. But in the long run, when offer costs become variable, it is expected that all firms all firms must, must recover their costs. Now, if you look back to what happened when when this Boko Haram issue started, most of these firms are used to what what is what is going on in the north. Whether either is banditry or or, or Boko Haram or all, all those other crises, they, 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 some most of them have actually consigned their, their activities to to the southern part where where there has led disruption to you know to, to businesses and what have you. So for me, I, I I think I think yes, inflation is a factor, but the, the power of these companies to adjust to the ability of cost, both in the short run and long run. Make them, make, you know, make them, you know, make the market itself an adjusting market. The market will come to adjust, to, you know, you know, to these realities. How, how, how much, how much elasticity does the market have to adjust? You know, if you're drawing rubber band, you draw, you draw, you draw, you draw to an extent. After some time, it would, it mm. would tear. So, mm -hmm. how much of elasticity are we expecting from the market? Uh, yes, le le talking about the equities market, how much elasticity, especially concerning some of these companies that we're talking about? I said earlier, most of these companies are used to what is going on here. When the issue of... But, uh, but, 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 but will they be used to insecurity around the country? Because now it's pervading. It's, it's not just the Northeast. It's about even the South. It's about states even in the South, where raw materials are like palm kernel for those that are into palm oil business and all of that. You know, because even when food is produced in the north, it's also brought to the south, isn't it? So, how much of that can we see the impact? Because it's spreading across the country, even in the west. Yes, yes I agree with you, Nancy. I, the, you know, um, it's spreading across the country, coming to the south. But I, I do not expect it to go beyond the level we are seeing it now. If it must go beyond that level, then the, com the country itself will cease to exist. I, I, if you look at it, if you analyze it very well, what is happening is not something that everybody, anybody is happy about. If, if, the, if the authority fails to do the right or take the right step, some things, some, 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 some normalizing things will happen. Things that will tend to normalize, you know, what is, you know, the abnormal thing that is, that is going on in the system will happen. And th that will basically address, you know, you know, the abnormalities in the system. So I, I don't expect this situation to get to the point where what is happening in the north will now we now we we, we now be we now be vastly extended to you know to, to the southern part of the country. I believe that once you get to that level, then we so, so feel that we are, not, we are no longer in the country. That's what that's what it means. So I don't expect to get you know to get to that level. I believe the authority will I mean they are they are stepping up. Look at what happened in Kaduna, look at the responses we are beginning to see here and there. Uh, they, they know that uh, they have to act. If they don't act, then they will lose the country. Who want to lose the country? I'm sure the president does not want to lose the country. I'm sure the National Assembly does not want to, does not want to lose the country. So both of them must act fast and act in national interest. It's, 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 it's obvious they must, they must do something. It can't get that worse. If it gets to that level, then no country will exist and everybody will not begin to hold cash. Mm. You talked about money supply earlier and you said that money is everywhere. Where do you have the money? Let me come so that you give me some. Because if, <laughs> if, <laughs> if money supply is, uh, is, is everywhere, Yet Nigerians are saying there is no cash in their pockets. They go to the market, they buy uh, less with a lot of money. So where's the money? Where's where's this money really? Nancy, money is see, money is in the hands of those who must invest. Money may not be in the hands of those who, who those who must make demand for for, for products or uh, for engaging some other activities. Money is if you, if, if you look at a cash is half ratio. 
since the, since 2010 or 20, 2009, the the, 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 the CBN has maintained this band. It, it shows that uh, you know for you to have a catch rate of about 27.5 percent. That is in every in every hundred naira, the bank we have to we have to take out 27 naira, 50 kobo, and put it put it in the in, in the vote of the vote of center. So you 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 should expect that. Uh, there is so much money, there is so much liquidity in the banking system that they can hardly invest. They, they, as I told you earlier, the banks will only invest in where there are good opportunities. When, once opportunities are not there, they won't go near it. So once opportunities are not there, those money, those monies are held back and, and, and put and, and put in the uh, 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 and put in their reserve so that uh, somehow when, when they when the need arises, they can they can go back to it. So CBN has not been able to manage that aspect at all. Money supply may not be benefiting the the the, the end users of products, but it's benefiting the investor who, who must hold those money. So money, but this money is still is still in many people's hands, not in the hands of those, not, not in the hands of the, the down trading, but it's in the hands of those who are still earning good income. So money supply is really is is, is really a challenge, and that's why I mean CBN has to CBN has to introduce. Uh, 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 you know this idea of uh, issuing special bill to to banks, especially those of them who go above their uh, the, above the, the required their cash is ratio. So uh, clearly, money supply is is still, is still a challenge to the economy, and that's why CBN is not able to even manage the inflation, even manage the uh, exchange exchange crisis. If we take a look at the inflation, the kind of inflation we have in Nigeria, sometimes I'm uh, I, I I you know I fight with myself. <laughs> to be able to explain it or to rationalize it. Because from your own explanation now, money supply, there's money everywhere. And when there's money everywhere, that is what economists call inflation, is it not? When the money supply is going up. And we see inflation in the country at 18.17%. We're expecting new data from uh, the National Bureau of Statistics. Uh, but if you take a look at the kind of inflation we're having, is it a normal inflation? whereby there's so much money supply or our own inflation is driven by structural factors such as the insecurity we've talked about farmers mm -hmm. can't go to their farms farmers even if they want to go to their farm they pay harvest allowance to the insurgents and co a lot of people are even in the idp camps now they are not farming in fact uh, a, a young girl told me over the weekend that when she goes back to medugri uh, later this year I asked her what she would be doing. You know what she told me? She said, she won't be doing anything. I said, what will you be doing when you get back to Medugri? She said, no, she won't be doing anything. I said, why? So how will you eat? She said, government feeds them. That's what she told me over yeah. the weekend. And I was startled. So, uh, and I, I don't think anyone is even looking into that. It's EIDP because people are out of their farms. So government is feeding them according to what she told me over the weekend. So the kind of inflation we have in the country is not is it textbook inflation, or is now uh, the the poor 